Dave, how are you today? I'm Yet good. We're back with another episode. Yep. Excellent. Uh, I suppose by the time this episode airs, we will be past Christmas, huh? Yes. Yes. It's a fun time. It's a fun season, right? It's yeah, a lot you like of, Christmas? <laughs> I, I do like Christmas. I, I, you know, I, I hate the commercial component of mm. Christmas, but I love the spiritual component when you really focus on the beauty of our Savior being born into the, into the world uh, and what that means. Yeah. You know, it, it's beautiful, you know? Um, it's exciting. Yeah, it gets kind of hard sometimes with the uh, amount of commercialism that's out there, though, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. But I, you know, uh, you know, I'm a grandfather now, so to see, uh, you know, my grandkids and how much joy comes from them and during Christmas and opening up presents, it's 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 a really a uh, beautiful experience and, and joy that I witness. Isn't it amazing? Like with the little kids, especially, it's almost like magical, miraculous. Christmas is just so big, right? Yeah. You know, and sometimes you, you kind of lose some of that. As uh, an adult? As even? an adult, yeah. There's a new grandbaby, right? Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah, miracle. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, she was born actually on St. John Paul's feast day, the same day of your Emily's wedding. Excellent. Oh, yeah. About that. Yeah. So that's exciting. And mm-hmm. it's hard not to, not to see the miracle of life and all that with that, right? Yeah. Yeah, it is. So, you know, our topic today is miracles do happen, and Ben Carson's the guest. So, what an honor for us to have Dr. Carson on the show. Like, how did that go? How was that? Um, It was really incredible, actually. Uh, uh, It was, uh, you know, a a very high-profile guest. Uh, It was exciting. I think what impressed me the most about him is that uh, the span of his life and how he started uh, as a young poor child in a community that was impoverished uh, uh, and how he overcome a lot of difficulties and and then went to school and, you know, and became a neurosurgeon and then a a politician and pretty amazing, pretty amazing story. Yeah. And uh, actually, we picked the topic today, Miracles Do Happen, because um, I think that you got into a little bit of that with him, right? Obviously, he's seen a lot in his life, a pediatric neurosurgeon. Mm -hmm. Gosh, what he must have seen. So... Yeah. Okay. Yeah. He, he's seen some amazing things. I mean, actually, he performed the very first successful uh, neurosurgery on an unborn child. I don't know if you knew that. No. Uh, he also um, based uh, a lot of his experience as a neurosurgeon concluded that God is so real. God is so present. Miracles happen all the time. And he experienced those miracles, which he shared with on our on our interview. Uh, he also shared the difficulty he had as a young child and some of the struggles he had with anger and and his journey when he went to college and he went to Yale and landed a leadership posi- position at John Hopkins and then became a world-renowned surgeon and even a presidential candidate was really a, an astounding sort of uh, sharing uh, of his Trajectory. story. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Uh, almost so, miraculous in and of itself. Yeah, yeah very miraculous. Yeah. yeah so, well... Um, I guess uh, what I was thinking is we'd focus a little bit on miracles and the importance of them for Christians. Um, and since, uh, since that kind of came up with Dr. Carson, uh, in his work uh, called Miracles, C.S. Lewis defines a miracle as an interference with nature by supernatural power. So, what is clear, Lewis explains, is that there's actually a prior question to the question, do miracles happen? And that is the question, is there a supernatural world, a world beyond the natural world, beyond what you can see, hear, smell, taste, touch, and feel? Someone who claims that only the natural world exists, like we might call somebody like this a materialist or a naturalist, would hold that there's a natural explanation for every phenomenon. Um, If there is no supernatural world, then there has to be only a natural explanation for everything. Um, And it's it's interesting. Lewis talks about how the word nature itself means what springs up or comes forth or is born or arrives or goes on of its own accord. So so the person who rejects, you might want to say, the supernatural basically thinks that everything has come about on its own. Mm -hmm. Um, People might say, by sheer chance. Um, actually, it's, it's, it's something that people don't tend to think about. But in this view, not only do miracles not exist, but neither does meaning exist. 
There's no meaning to anything or anyone. Your life and my life are meaningless, um, really effectively, at least like objectively speaking. Um, and this is a fact that Nietzsche actually said everybody needed to wake up to. You know, he, he says, and um, that's where the whole God is dead thing comes in. Um, we need to realize that there is no God and there is no meaning, and that's the way life is. Mm. Um, but when you think about it, it's a pretty <laughs> dismal and dark outlook. Um, but nonetheless, that, that would be the same, there would be that consequence of not believing in the supernatural either. Um, now, I wanted to mention that there exists another possible view, and this view is that um, there is a God that exists who created the universe, but and he establishes the laws of the universe, but then effectively has nothing to do with the universe. So, he kind of just spins it and then leaves it alone. And this is referred to as deism, usually, um, that obviously there, there's still a sort of, you might want to say, movement of the supernatural with regards to the natural, but only insofar as the natural world has a supernatural cause, right? Um, this view was actually held by a lot of the founding fathers. So, uh, many of the founding fathers were deists. They weren't Christians. Um, it's, a, it's a view that really springs out of the Enlightenment. Um, but I, I need to be clear, it is not a Judeo-Christian view. Mm -hmm. It's not compatible with Christianity at all. I mean, the Judeo-Christian view of God is a God that is very involved in creation. I mean, the Bible is replete with God getting involved, right? The Bible itself, the whole idea of divine revelation means God gets involved. He speaks to his people. He reveals himself to them. Um, we pray because we believe that God does and can act in the world. Otherwise, why would we pray? Mm -hmm. Right? There'd be no reason to pray. Um, of course, then you add to that the fact of the incarnation. God becomes man. You can't get like any more involved in the world than actually becoming, you know, man. And, uh, and so, we do necessarily, therefore, believe in miracles, that there's a supernatural world that, that is intervening in the natural world, a mm -hmm. supernatural power that's breaking into nature, mm -hmm. uh, eternity breaking into time. Um, and we don't have time to discuss why those who believe there's only a natural world or those who believe in deism um, are misguided and why those ideas are, are incoherent. But I want to make sure that we talked about the fact that like they're just not Christian. So, mm -hmm. um, yet you'll hear people who are Christian say things that are really deist. Um, and that's probably because they just don't know their faith very well. Mm. So. Yeah, I mean, the question I always ask myself, and I even ask people, you know, w with the existence of God, is that why are there miracles? You know, Jesus walked on water, he healed the sick. You know, uh, why do you think he did that? He, he was drawing attention to the fact that God is real in our world, and he's showing us the reality right. of God's existence, which is why miracles, I believe, happen today. It's right. God intervening, showing that, hey, I'm here. Right. I know that you're human and you need proof. A little tap on the shoulder. And here's another miracle. Right. And what's amazing is that, you know, um, the, the, you know, the news doesn't cover the miracles that do happen all the time yeah. in, in the medical if world. If it bleeds, it leads. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so. I guess miracles don't bleed, but they bleed in a different way. Well, you know? and, and that's it. Like, yeah. it, if you really had people, uh, the news is typically bad news. And you don't you don't see a lot of good news, yeah. which is a, it's a shame. Yeah. And then, of course, you know, stepping in the realm of the miraculous in the secular culture these days is you know probably a little a little little taboo. Yeah. Um, but you know, you bring up an interesting point um, because why did Jesus perform miracles? And that's a great question. You know, he walked on water. You said, I don't know if you know this, but like, there's a whole strain of biblical scholarship that doesn't agree with that that sort of dismisses the miracles it's like it's like deconstruction got into biblical criticism you mean you're saying that they're saying that they did they did not no, happen absolutely um there's this group called the jesus seminar that really made um a lot of these false distinctions between the jesus of history and the christ of faith and um and and this kind of stuff where jesus was like an ordinary guy and it's only the church reflecting back that kind of 
attributed all these things to him and that the miracle stories are really symbolic or allegorical that they're they're not really telling events that happened mm. um uh, one of the ones that always cracks me up is is the one about you know that jesus feeding the five thousand with just five loaves and two fish um the, 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 some of these these uh, these biblical scholars would would try to make us believe that what the real miracle was was that you know that that Jesus evoked generosity in the hearts of people and all of these like loaves and fish that they had been like like miserly hiding like under mm-hmm. their cloaks they brought out and shared with everybody so it's the great miracle of sharing mm-hmm. it's like oh my gosh you gotta be kidding me mm-hmm. like you know it's like and yet this is what the ridiculous stuff that you'll hear. In the Gospels, Jesus' miracles are called signs. Right. Mm-hmm. And, and signs do what? They point to something. What were the signs that Jesus was performing pointing to? But to his identity. Sure. You know? Um, even, even like when he calms the storm, right? With just saying, peace, be still. What's, what's the question that the apostles ask? Who, Who is, is this guy? that even wind and sea right. obey him? Right. Like, like there's only one answer to that question. Right? The answer is that he's God. Right. Right. So like these are the kinds of things that the the miracles were pointing to. And yeah. um and they're pointing to the fact that the kingdom of God was breaking into the world. Mm-hmm. And Jesus himself says that. If by the finger of God these signs or these miracles are performed, then the kingdom of God is upon you. You know, like that's what it's supposed to indicate. That's what the miracles of Jesus were doing. They were supposed to elicit faith. Yeah. Which yeah. is what they do today. Right. Right. If you pay attention to them. Well, and again, have the, did the miracles even really cha- stop? Like people say, well, Jesus' day, you know, maybe Jesus, how come we don't have the miracles we have in the Bible? Like think about, you need miracles in order to canonize saints. We've got like 2,000 years of like, you know, we've got a, a wellspring of miracles. Right. You know, so learn about them. Yeah. You know, what about, what about like everywhere where the Blessed Virgin Mary appears? Their miracles, the, the miracle of the sun, like witnessed by 70,000 people. All you got to look is the Shroud of Tour, and that's an, it's still unexplainable. It's still or Guadalupe, unsp- and, uh, you know, so. That's right. They're, so they're, they're out there. You just have yeah. to find them. That's right. Or, you know, the Eucharistic miracles that are so present that are still unexplainable. Yes, absolutely. You just got to do your due diligence and seek them and find them. Well, and I think that's it. And so, um, Amen. But I, I think that also, too, on some level, you mentioned the daily miracles. We talked about the miracle of the grandchildren or the, the clear evidence of God's existence that Dr. Carson talks about mm-hmm. in his own story or in his witnessing and his medical practice. Right. Is that broadly speaking, everything is miraculous from the standpoint that God holds all things in being. So there is no nature without supernature. There is no natural world continuing on without God holding it, right? And I think that that's key. There's nothing that happens in the world that God either doesn't make happen or allow to happen. And so in that sense, though there might be a natural process to things, the very fact that that process can continue and take place is only because God has willed it. Right. So if we look at that definition of it's the supernatural breaking in to the natural on some level, then really just being itself, existence itself is miraculous. Mm-hmm. So. Sounds great, Dave. Great discussion. Thanks. You're welcome. <laughs>